novelist Marvin Hagler. The lightweight division of Atlantic City, we're going to go across the country to Las Vegas. Two weeks ago, Battle of Champions. At stake, the WBC World Super Welterweight Championship. Roberto Duran is the challenger against the title holder, Thomas Hearns. Hearns won this title against Wilfred Benitez back in 1982. No moss, no moss, but Roberto Duran has atoned for that, beating Davey Moore and then lasting 15 rounds against marvelous Marvin Hagler. How will he do against this man, Thomas Hearns? Will he be the hitman again on this night? This is a chance for Hearns now to move into the big money fight, and just prior to the start of it, Duran was not like his usual self. He sat down in the corner. Generally, he dances around the ring as an opponent comes up, trying to taunt and intimidate. But that was not the case on this warmish evening in Las Vegas. So coming up now, we'll have Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy with the call. We'll have the first round here from Las Vegas. It is Hearns against Duran in just a moment. Seventeen hours. That's ringside at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas for the WBC World Super Welterweight Championship. Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearns. Let's join our ring announcer now, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, this next round of the evening is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Art Lurie, Chairman, and by the World Boxing Council, Jose Suleiman, President. The officials assigned by those two governing bodies, the judges are Newton Campos of Brazil, Harry Gibbs of England, and Hans Desmert of Belgium. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth. Counting is a knockdown, Jane Broadfoot. And the referee is Carlos Padilla. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, fighting out of Panama City, Panama, weighing an even 154 pounds. He has a professional record of 77 wins, 5 defeats, with 58 knockouts. He has held three world titles in his career. He is a man with the hands of stone, Roberto. Two champions at 154 pounds. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for tonight's bout. Thomas Hearns came in right at the limit of 154 pounds as we see the referee Carlos Padilla giving the instructions and Roberto Durant at 153 and a quarter. Of course, the reach advantage goes to Thomas Hearns with 78 inches to 67 inches for Roberto Durant. The age factor, well, could be one. Thomas Hearn, certainly in his prime at 25, however, has had only two fights in the last two years because of hand injuries. Roberto Duran will be 33 years old tomorrow. The fact that he's had to come down from weight up to close to 190 pounds to get to 154, the older he gets, the tougher that task must prove, and the effect of it over 12 rounds may be seen tonight. Round number one. Carlos Padilla is the referee. He will not score. Harry Gibbs from England. Newton Campos from Brazil. Hans Desbert from Belgium will be the scoring judges on the 10-point must system. Nine or fewer points to the loser of a round. Tim Roberto Duran has a real heavy beard. In most states, uh, that's illegal. I'm surprised that uh, Emmanuel Stewart didn't complain to the commission about that. Well, Thomas Hearns has a real light beard. So, well, <laughs> so far, the beard championship has gone to Roberto, but... I, your point is quite uh, well taken, Gil, uh, and we'll see if it has an effect that you can pick up in terms of uh, Hearns landing his blow to the face of Duran. A little 
tentative here in the early going, and uh, Duran having a little problem with the canvas in this early going has already slipped a little bit twice. Ninety degrees at the time of the bell for the first round here in Las Vegas, with the sun starting to sink in the west. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, round one scheduled for 12, remember, under WBC rules, a 12-round title bout. Tim, Tommy Hearns should be working that jab overtime. Instead, he's looking to land the big bomb, and he, he landed, landed a, good right hand. a good right hand to the ear of Duran that sent him back into the ropes. Of course, Camacho Duran quickly saying, it didn't hurt me. There's that left jab of Hearns backing up Roberto Duran. But Duran is making a mistake, Tim, of standing straight up. He's fighting a tall guy. He should get lower. He's not going to be able to reach up to Hearns. He's got to slip the punches, get underneath him. Can't get his head moved back with that jab, or he's really going to get nailed. Under a minute to go, and Duran slipped. However, there is blood over the right, oh, left okay. eye, pardon me, the left eye of Roberto okay. Duran. A slice it looks it like it's on the eyelids in the corner of the left eye of Roberto Duran. And Hearns is backing Roberto Duran up at will. A solid right, and down goes Duran. Duran is on the canvas. It looks stunned. Yes, he knew his feet, but he's staggering. He's hurt. Hey. Approaching the 22nd mark remaining when we're in round number one. He's bothered by that cut eye, Tim. He's very seldom ever he's putting a fight. Hearn lands a combination, and Duran waving at him to come at him, but meanwhile taking punishment. Down he goes again. That's, that's going to save him, Tim. That's by, by the fact that he went down, the bell is going to ring. Got quickly to the six. To his feet at the end of the first round. And he must finish the eight count, and there is the bell that ends round number one. The bell does not end the round, and he went to the neutral corner. Roberto Duran went to the neutral corner. He did not realize where his corner is, so Duran is in deep trouble. Thomas Hearn with a vicious attack. Let's look at that first knockdown, Tim. Here's Roberto Duran standing straight as a stick right in front of Tommy Hearns. Hearns is measuring him out, weaves a little bit, and bang, right on the chin with a good right hand. Tremendous shot by Thomas Hearns, and he immediately had Duran in trouble again, knocking him back into the ropes, and Duran goes down one more time in this first round. Tim, he knows he has a hurt daily, and he's going for broke, blowing caution to the wind, and just blowing punches and punches. Duran is really in trouble now, Tim, leaning back, trying to get away. Where can he hide? He can't. Those punches are coming fast as lightning. A tremendous body punch, another body punch, slips him right off his feet, Tim, and down again. Here comes Tommy Hearns out now, Tim. He knows he's still in trouble. He's going to try to finish him off right now. We're now into round number two. Thomas Hearns goes quickly to the center of the ring. A cut on the left eyelid of Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran can survive the knockdown to round one. It remain to be seen. He looks still a little wobbly to me, Jim. Yeah, he's still straight up in the air, Tim. You have to get low when you fight a fighter like Tommy Hearns. Good left and a right behind it by the champion. Duran in trouble again in his corner. Has not hung on at all. Now, finally, he grabs Hearn. Hearn's got look it, look it. several free shots with Roberto. He's wobbly, Jim. His legs are still wobbly. He's trying to cover up. Another solid right hand by Thomas Hearns in a combination. The referee Padilla watching him. Yeah, he's up in the air again. Duran just fighting on instinct, though, Gil. He's just hanging a big that's right it. hand. That, that's, that's it, Tim. A Anytime huge you right hand. Forward, the fight's over, Tim. A huge right hand by Thomas Hearns. Right to the cheekbone of Roberto Duran, and it is all over. A second-round knockout for the hitman, Thomas Hearns, who said he would knock out Duran in two, and he did just that. He sure did, Tim. We've said so many times before. A fighter can go into the ring and he can age overnight. And that's exactly what happened to Roberto Duran. He didn't have it from the opening belt. Back live here in New York, we're standing by to talk live with the hitman who is back, Thomas Hearns. And up in Boston, you can see the man he might be fighting next, marvelous Marvin Hagler. We'll look at some replays of Hearns' greatest triumph and we'll look ahead with the champions when we return after this. been 
done using my razor. Mine burned me. I don't blame your razor. Use my ice blue. At the speed with which you attacked Durand, it struck me that I don't think I've ever seen you quite that quick. Even in that great fight against Sugar Ray Leonard, I don't think you were as fast as you were in the first round. I felt that I was very quick there, Brad, Brad, in that first round, uh, because my plan was to, to move to Durant, take, put the pressure on Durant, make him back up. I knew once I could get him back, that he can't fight back it up. Well, you know, Gil Clancy made the observation that he never could solve your size. He never could get down on a crouch and get in on the inside and attack you from there. No, I've, I've made it very difficult for him to get inside. Um, each time he moved forward, start to come forward, I put the left hand out there, make him fight the arms. He has to fight the arms in order to get to it. Now, we're going to show the knockout again in the second round. What did the corner tell you between rounds? Were you trying to get him out of the way and not give him a second chance? Was that the strategy here? Well, when I went back to the corner, my coach, Emmanuel Stewart, told me uh, just to take it easy, go in there, and he's ready to go, just go in there and finish him off. And you obviously did, as we'll see here from this replay in the second round. You had him backed up against the ropes, and Tim Ryan made the observation here. He was going simply out of instinct, and in a matter of seconds, down he goes. You hit him with an awesome right. Yes, I, uh, the shot that I hit him with, I was shooting, uh, shooting the left jab first uh, to the head, and then I faked the left jab to the body and came straight up with the right hand on the top. That was the shot there. And how did the right hand come out of the fight? I know you've had some problems with it in the past. Any difficulty? The right hand pain? came out perfectly. No problem with the hand at all. All right. Now, what is next for you? Do you want to fight Marvelous Marvin Hagler? You're smiling already. I can tell what the answer is going to be. But uh, what's next for you? Well, hopefully we can get Marvin Hagler. Um, we are, our plans are to move on to the middleweight division and take on Marvin Hagler because he's still there. Now you say the middleweight, then would you move into the light heavyweight? You keep going with that big frame of yours? Um, our plans are to keep moving from the middleweight division to the light heavyweight division. Win those two titles, and I will have to give me four titles, and then I'll, I'll move on. My box career I have a suspicion over. that marvelous Marvin Hagler has other plans, but I'm gonna t we'll be talking to him live in Boston when we continue here on CBS Sports Sunday in just a moment. Firestone announces our master plan for better to say, well, Thomas Hearns can beat Marvelous Marvin Hagler because Hearns went two rounds and Marvelous went only 15 all the way against Roberto Duran. But Marvelous, how much did you take out of Duran before he fought <clears throat> Hearns? How do you feel about that? Exactly. I feel as though that I took a lot out of Roberto Duran. He was only a shell of the fighter that when I fought him. And not to take anything away from Tommy because that's the way to go in and get the job done. But I tell you, the biggest fight that I've been waiting for, and that's with Sugar Ray Leonard. Now that he's, he's gone out of the game, now I only have one other thing to do, and that's to fight Thomas Hearns. And I'm planning on breaking every bone in his body. You sound like you got a vendetta against Thomas. Are you Not still really. upset about the fact that that first fight that you had going was Exactly. Out? I trained very hard for that. I'm still a little disappointed about it. But that's great, because that's the name of the game. This is a money opportunity sport, and uh, I think that Thomas is a great fighter. Not to take anything away from him, but... Uh, it's, it's dual to happen, because we're getting closer every day. Thomas, it sounds like he's ready. Yeah, well, it sounds like I'm he's still ready, shaking, yeah. Tommy. I'm still I know, shaking. Uh, after watching this fight, watching the replay of this fight, uh, this Duran Hearns fight, uh, Mom, I know you, you're definitely scared. You, I, I can see you shaking. <laughs> you're shaking like a leaf on a tree right now. Um, <laughs> and just a matter of time before you fall. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, you're never going to make it to the light heavyweight, because first you have to get through me. That'll be an easy test. Oh, okay. Action. Action. Put the name on the contract. I'd oh, like I, to promote I this. Contracts don't mean anything anymore. <laughs> you yeah. ready to go? What about this fall, Marvin? Any tax well, problems, or can right, you go again this year? Well, right now, what we're trying to do is uh, I'm spending a little time with my family and stuff. And, Spend a lot uh, of time, Marvin. Listen, listen. And also to uh, take care of one, which is number one contender, Mustafa Hamshaw, and then come after Thomas Hearns. You do want to fight Hamshaw first. I want to get that yeah, straight. Yeah, I believe because he is the number one contender, and there is a... Uh, a mandatory defense there. Now, does that mean you would put Hearns off until early next year? Marvelous, how would you well, set that up? Well, we try not to, because Tom, uh, Tommy don't really uh, scare me at all. And uh, I feel as though they have to stuff to beat him. Durant stood too, too upright and really didn't put the pressure on Tommy the way you should have to fight Tommy. All right, Marvelous. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. All right. And Thomas, good luck to you. I know it's Thank just a matter of time, because that is the fight that the fans want to see. So good yeah, luck to both right. of you. Yes, 